If you drive into Manchester on the main route from the south, you can't miss Moss Side. It's an unremarkable paper chain of flats, houses, streets and wasteland, divided into two main areas with little in common, except that someone thought they'd make a neat package on the electoral map. To the north, traditional Labour territory, full of typical inner city problems and solutions. Boarded up flats and houses, streets earmarked for demolition, the high-rise mistakes that up to seven years ago replaced the old slums. And now, new versions of the old-style council homes, as the planners finally admit that their predecessors got it right first time around. And in the south, the wider boulevards, neat, detached, private homes with green lawns and rose beds that are the Tory hunting grounds. Apart from that, nothing really except a few shopping arcades, a brewery and a handful of small businesses. Politicians providing, for a few weeks at least, the brightest splash of colour around. Labour's choice is an open double-decker bus, complete with stirring music, and, of course, their candidate, local architect George Morton. Defending a 4,000 majority, he's campaigning firmly on Labour's record in tackling inflation and prices. And although the three main parties insist that race is not an issue, they're battling hard for the crucial 6,000 or so immigrant votes. At this meeting, some Asian leaders pledged support for Labour, after suitable prayers, of course. Brothers, friends and comrades. Conservative candidate Tom Murphy reckons that quite a few comrades are forsaking the Labour bus for the Tory caravan, which also comes complete with music to stir the timid breast. A local engineer, Mr Murphy, knows a swing of only 6.4% would put him in Westminster and boost his party's hopes for a substantial majority in the general election. He sees law and order, prices and education as the main issues. Conservative and Labour both claim that national issues dominate this campaign, although a visiting Mrs Thatcher was left in no doubt as to the importance of local matters. Please believe me, oh, Mrs I Thatcher, don't. don't make the government spend money on them flats. They're not fit for a dog to live in. Liberal candidate Peter Thompson actually lives in one of those high-rise flats and sees housing and the environment as by far the main issue in his campaign. As a full-time community worker, he claims substantial personal support from voters, to say nothing of Cyril Smith. But behind the smiles, the Liberals know that this is a crucial test of their showing in the general election that is almost certain to follow the formal ending of the Lib Lab Pact in the autumn. National Front candidate Herbert Andrew, a local school teacher, has indulged in only limited campaigning due to the opposition of the Labour-controlled City Council, who refused to let him hire school halls for meetings, and the anti-Nazi League, who followed him around on occasions to shout abuse. The Front's one public open-air meeting so far was interrupted at first by brief but violent skirmishes between the two sides. Mr Andrew complains that law and order is a thing of the past. And on behalf of the Workers' Revolutionary Party, actress Vanessa Redgrave is in action again, warning of future civil war. Despite the patriotic music on the party wagons, land of hope and glory, Moss Side is not. But the voters' response to the promises of the campaign will be an important pointer to Britain's political future.